consider the graphs of two different sequences. First I've graphed a random an that I made up, and then I went and graphed the absolute value of that same sequence. And in the top sequence A, there were some positive and negative terms. That when I take the absolute value, it takes all of those negatives and makes them all positives. Now, this is a sequence, and in both of these sequences, at least visually, it appears that the limit's going to be zero. But just because the limit of the terms goes to zero doesn't say anything about what the series does. So let's investigate that. Let's compare the series that adds up the an to the series that adds up the absolute value of the an. Now, because I programmed this in, I happen to know what this series is. This is the series minus 1 to the n minus 1 all divided by square root of n. So the absolute value, the effect it has, is it just takes all of that minus 1 stuff and gets rid of it. It just all turns it into plus 1. Now, these two sequences are ones that we can do by previous methods we've seen. The top one, it's an alternating thing with the minus 1 to the n minus 1. And and then it multiplies it by 1 over square root n, which is a positive decreasing sequence with limit 0. It satisfies all conditions of the alternating series test, so the top one indeed converges by the alternating series test. As for the bottom one, this is a p-test. It's a p with n equal to 1 half, and so this is a p-series that diverges. So the lesson here is that taking absolute values of the terms makes a big deal. In this example, it converts it from a convergent to a divergent series. Now, why might that be the case? If you think about the one with positives and negatives, when you take a positive term and you add it to a negative term, it cancels. Maybe not entirely or all the way, but the combination of positives and negatives, they, they don't add up as much as only adding positives, or alternatively, only adding negatives together. So when you take the absolute value, you get rid of any form of internal cancellation that you have. So it would make sense that the absolute value one would be the larger, that it might diverge even though the one with the minus signs that converged. And indeed, this is generally the case. So a theorem that we have is that if the sum of the absolute value of the ANs converges, then the original series with just the ANs, that converges as well. It says that when you put this absolute value around it, you have a stronger condition. So when you know it converges with the absolutes there, then it converges without them. Indeed, we have a little bit of terminology here. We'll say that absolute convergence, that expression, is what we mean when we take the sum of the absolute value of ANs. So another way to say this is that if it converges absolutely, then it converges in the normal old sense. But the other direction is not true. If something converges, like in the example we saw before that converged by the alternating series test, it does not necessarily converge absolutely. It might, but it might not. And in that scenario where it doesn't, we call this conditional convergence. So conditional convergence is where the original series converges, but does not converge absolutely. It doesn't converge when you wrap it in absolute value signs. Indeed, this example that we started the video with, this minus 1 to the n minus 1 over root n, that was a conditionally convergent series. It converged, but it didn't converge absolutely. So these are just a couple little pieces of terminology that are going to be very important for our next test, the ratio test and the root test.